And so I also teach at a graduate school in Hyde Park. I'm a professor. That's my full-time teaching ministry. I teach at Catholic Theological Union. And I teach uh, both seminarians and lay people, like Susan, uh, she was my student. Um, I teach them, the seminarians I teach how to do ritual making and how to preach. I have the best job in the school. Best job in the school. Because I get them, because these are young men who want to be ordained, shaman, priests, ritual makers, mystagogues, uh, these wonderful words. Well, it seems to me that one of the dissatisfactions of the young generations, the millennials and the ones after them, is the dissatisfaction with institutions, religious institutions. And nevertheless, there's a desire for the transcendent, the the experience, the mystical experience of love and of some depth, in-depth interiority and meaning. That's real. And so I give them poetry to read and things to read, to find language, because Heidegger is correct here too, that language is the house of being. Yes. And the more language we have, the more rich consciousness can be. And I find that poetry is one way of doing it. I do that with my students at the and there's a wonderful man named Walter Brueggemann. He talks about how we've become a world of flattened prose. Flattened prose. Memos, text messages, and tweets. Rather than the beauty of, of language that can come when you dwell, dwell, dwell in the beauty of language. And most recently, over the past three or four years, I've been working with them on interiority as part of the presiding style. In fact, they're going to read Integral Meditation by Ken Wilber because I'm, there's no way that we can engage these rituals without some sort of interior life. And I was validated on that this summer. Validated. I was on a retreat this summer at a farm outside of Paris, La Ferme, with Jean Vanier. There's a community called L'Arche Communities. The L'Arche Communities are communities around the world that have been established for people with um, learning and developmental disabilities, emotional disabilities. Uh, Down syndrome was the word I believe we used previous. And Jean Vanier was a kind of like a St. Francis. He was a military man. He left the military dis, totally disengaged by war and violence. And um, he, um, he, he went on for a PhD in philosophy and psychology at La Sorbonne in France, where I might have gone. And, uh, and then he realized the suffering of people who were locked up in their homes because of this, of Down syndrome, this developmental disability, and they were locked up and put to shame, and, and in some cases even chained, and he saw that brutality in France. And he was inspired with a group of others to do something about it, and so he created these communities called L'Arche. I think the word L'Arche means bow, like a rainbow. And, um, and so he's 88 now, and he has communities all over the world. And that was the place we went for retreat. And so I, I presided at Eucharist there, and he came up to me and thanked me, and he said to me, I see Jesus inside you, which was very touching. I see Jesus. And so I, I asked to have an, a, a little talk with him, and he says, he was very sweet to me, very affirming. But then I asked him, if you were teaching young priests like I do, how to preside at Mass and how to preach. What would you want to make sure that they experienced and that they knew and, and, and knew deep down knowing? He thought a moment and he said, In interiority. And I nearly fell off my chair. He says, you cannot do any of what you do without some form of interior life.